Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, the Bear, Chris Felica, along with Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, and Will Hill will join us uh, in a little while for the Gambling Group Chat. So we got three full weeks left, right? 11, 18, 25, then Conference Championship Day, and then the, then the then then bowl season and complete chaos and opt outs will, will will be upon us. So uh, <laughs> there's today is no, today is November 9th. The portal opens December first. Oh man, all madness starts in the portal. Opens. How, how time flies when you when you, when you, when you're having fun. So, I know. Kind of a uh, a, a week here where. We, we, we've kind of looked into the future at that Big Ten three-way tiebreak of if Penn State beats Michigan and Michigan beats Ohio State, uh, the tiebreaker situation there, which I think a lot of people think is like college football playoff rankings, but yeah. it's not. It comes down to like the combined winning percentage of your opponents from the other division and the fact that Penn State played Iowa and beat Iowa, like that's giving them the edge yeah. right now because Iowa has the best record uh, in the West compared to the uh, the opponents of the, uh, uh, the Michigan and Ohio State. So Penn State, a lot to play for this week. You could say that if they pull an upset, they they maybe become the favorite to reach the uh, the Big Ten championship game. Possibly. I don't think they're going to pull that upset, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, look, I think the country probably is rooting for them to beat Michigan this weekend because so that story continues to manifest itself in ways we never thought possible where now, you know, Connor Stallions is a vacuum salesman, use vacuum salesman, and this, the, the, the story's coming out. You know, Michigan, I'll tell you what, man. They're giving a – they're giving like an, like an A-plus example of how to muddy the waters with – Sort of give you know letting out stories that really are related to what they did, but not really right. Correct. Like yes, and, and they're doing a really good job of this. Now look, if if they broke the rules, then they should get in trouble. Like I have a very lukewarm take on it. Like I, I if they broke the rules, they should get in trouble. Coaches sharing information with other coaches is sort of like happens behind the scenes. Yes. That's not anything new. Correct. You know this. I mean, you're you talk to coaches every weekend. You've been in this business very long. You know how it works. So the idea that Ohio State and Purdue and these schools like got together to give information, that's sort of normal. Um, now, does it break the sportsmanship clause in the Big Ten? I don't know. But the fact is, if Connor Stallions was, in fact, having people or himself recording signs from the silence, whether it was impactful, and I've seen the argument, well, it's not impactful, so what does it matter? That, did they break the rules or not? If they did, they're going to be punished. If not, they won't be punished. Like To me, I, I'm so indifferent to this because that's as simple as it is did they break the rules or not if they did should they be punished i say yes i don't know what the punishment is i really don't know i don't have a great answer for that but all this other stuff around it really has nothing to do with the fact of whether or not they broke the rules you, you two things impactful yeah I, I love how they're saying it may not it's not impactful this junior assistant or whatever like he was standing right next yeah, to they, your defensive coordinator and, and your coordinator on the field like telling him what's coming. Yeah. I think you made the determination there that it's kind of impactful what he yes. was doing. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and I think that there's going to be a little bit of plausible deniability for Harbaugh knowing what's happening. I, I mean, they're going to try to put, I, and I, look, I, the argument is basically right. That like Connor Stallings did this on his own. Harbaugh just told him, you give us the sign, you get the signs for us. Right. Or so, or someone told him you, you, that that's your job. And then he went about his own way to break the rules, which is certainly possible. I, I do f give them that idea. But the idea that Michigan came out yesterday, well, he was not impactful. No, no, come on. We have, there's video. We, 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 there's video of him next to coordinators helping them discern and decode the signals. So, like, just don't BS us. You know what I mean? Like, you, we see the video. It's, again, I, I don't really care, man. I'm, ha I'm laughing every day at the new information coming out because it continues to be a hilarious college football story. But just don't lie to us about it, man. And, and that's the thing, like, there, there is a rule. There is a, a rule, a rule against being in an opponent's stadium, videotaping. Yes. That, that there's a rule that apparently looks like it was broken. Yes, there was no how they're, they're. It's two different things. Correct. Like, and that's what you talk about. Michigan trying to money. Like they're throwing. Oh, well, I'll coach you shit. That's yes. That's gone on forever. What Michigan is doing or did. Yeah. That is something completely different that there is a rule against. So yes. like like th that's what I I can't grasp people who like, oh, it's the same. No, it's, it's not, not the, it's same. Not the it's same. Two different and, things. And I think the hardest part again, I mentioned this I think in this podcast before, the hardest part for me is figuring out how much it actually mattered. Now, it mattered more than it did not, right? Like if you know what's happening, it's, it's an advantage. Again, Michigan is so good 
and they're so talented and they're well coached. It's like how much did it actually matter in games when they when they win, you know, 50 to 10? Probably not very much. But does it matter when they play Ohio State? Because they couldn't beat Ohio State for so right. many years, and all of a sudden they can. Now, our, our counter to that is they have better football players now, which is absolutely true. They have much better football players. So that to me is just kind of my football brain on it. Like I just don't know how much it actually helped them win or lose. And that's probably how they're not gonna, you know, how they may or may not decide to punish them. But um the, again, like there's two separate things. There's the NCAA violation, and then there's also the Big Ten sportsmanship clause. So there are two different things, right? The NCAA is not designed anything right now. Will the Big Ten act, Bear? I, I don't think they will. I think they'll they'll act in a way where they put some sort of punishment out there that is appealable by Michigan, and nothing will happen, and Jim Harbaugh will be gone to the NFL by the time anything happens. I'm I'm with you there, and which I, and which, I, which I don't want to say that's wrong or right, but I just don't like that any potential punishment and correct. penalty will be down the road with maybe a group affecting a group of players correct. that were not there yes. when this was going on. Absolutely. So that, so that, that, I, that I don't like. And which is the, which I guess the downfall of the kind of the, the NCAA system, right? Like if you punish the coach, the coaches just leave and go somewhere else. Now they have a show clause, obviously, but we've seen coaches go, you know, Pete Carroll, what's the NFL, right? Like you can avoid the show clause by going to the NFL and then who gets affected? The the players and, 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 and coaches left behind. So I hope they don't go that uh, go that direction. Uh, but I do hope, Bear, that we pick a lot of winners this week. You have a pile of picks oh, I got a pile. for college football this week. And again, pile guys, crap. these are wagers Bear's actually making because nobody in their right mind will tell you to bet Rice at UTSA. UTSA favored by 14 and a half. Total is 58. Rice is four and five overall. They're two and three in conference. The Owls are seven and two against the spread this season. Um, and uh, they they just lost to SMU, but they did cover. UTSA is six and three overall. They're five and zero oh in conference. Uh, they're only three and six against the spread this season. Where are you going here, Bear? Well, you know, the only games that the Rice has been beaten double digits were by Texas when they covered and, and South Florida. So that gets to the uh, to, to the ETS success, but. I think people kind of with, with Frank Harris being out early in the year for, for UTSA, I think people maybe kind of thought they were in for a down year, maybe slept a little bit on them. But since Harris has come back, five straight wins, most of them by at least two touchdowns, at least 36 points in every game. And Rice's defense has struggled yeah. against most of the good teams that they have played all year. So I laid 14 and a half here with uh, UTSA at home. Uh, what an incredible logo back here. Look at this thing. Look at this rice. rice. This, this is unbelievable. It's awesome. Owls, Just the, the exactly. owls everywhere. I love it so it's much. It's like the trip advisor. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, Frank Harris is really good. And for like you mentioned, the guys that have, and we were actually, Sammy was on this earlier, right? About the Frank Harris injury information. We kind of made some yeah. money. But with him being back, it changes what, what UTSA is. And um, they score a ton of points, which they did last season. Frank Harris was great. And, and luckily for my Ducks, we have their OC now, Will Stein, who's doing a great job at Oregon. All right, your second game. Of the schedule, of your schedule. Old Dominion, plus 13 and a half at Liberty. Total is 59. ODU, four and five on the season. Three and three in the fun belt. Monarchs are six and three against the spread this year. And two weeks ago, they lost to, to James Madison, who's undefeated by three points. Yeah. Liberty, nine and zero, oh, and Liberty is seven and two against the spread this season. What you thinking here? I mean, I, I think Ricky Ronnie's team has a chance to get to six wins. They need to win two of their final three. I, I think asking them to go on the road here and pull an outright upset over Liberty might be a little bit too much. But you mentioned the game against James Madison, lost by a field goal, lost by a field goal to Wake, lost a one-score game at Marshall, uh, lost a one-score game at Coastal Carolina. So, like, they've been a tough out all year long, and it would uh, it would not surprise me if they were a tough out again. This week, and so I, I took the uh, the Monarchs plus the thirteen and a half against a Liberty team, which has also been very good against the number this year. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I have uh, access to some some uh, analytics and some data, and when you look at like Liberty's schedule, and it basically breaks it down to where like if you're good, it's green; if you're red, obviously it's bad. And like Liberty's schedule is everyone's red, awesome. just like red, red awesome. for offense, defense, overall, special teams. Like they played awesome. nobody this year, and it's like it's not. And if, and they've if done what they should do, and if ODU has a, a little bit of a pulse, I am with you here. They should cover this game. All right, we're heading to the ACC conference now. You have North Carolina State at Wake Forest. Wake is getting two and a half points here. 
total of a low total here, 43 and a half. NC State, six and three this season. They're three and two conference, just beat Miami 20 to six. They also beat Clemson the previous week. They're a little hot right now. Uh, both those wins were at home. Now they're on the road at Wake. Wake is five and four overall. Also, five and four gets a spread, and they're only one and five in conference. Where are you leaving here? This is just a play against the Wolfpack here. Yeah. And, and you mentioned on it. They pulled consecutive home upsets where they were at least six, six and a half point home underdog against Miami, against Clemson the last couple of weeks. And now you're favored on the road against a bad Wake Forest team. So, you know, Wake isn't going to score a ton of points, but how many points will NC State score? Like a weird situation there with their quarterback, MJ Morris, yep. leaving the team. Now you go back to Brennan Armstrong, who was not good was in bad. the early part of the year. So I'm just going to hold my nose. And, and tell me what the line and, and do what the line is telling me to do. And that's taken and that's take uh, Wake Forest plus two and a half. NC State 103rd in the country in points per drive on offense and Wake is 111. I feel like when teams play like that, you just take the points, right? Because a defensive, defensive it's, it's game. Not a, like, it's not a lot of points. Maybe, maybe you, <laughs> it's better. Than so zero. Some people would argue maybe taking Wake Forest money lines better, but I'd rather, I'd rather take the two and a half and maybe you'd come up. Maybe they would. Oh, yeah, okay. So you mentioned an interesting, something interesting. So like, I always take the points over the money line. With the dog, right. I take the points. With the favorite, I'll say the money line. Yes, exactly. That's exactly because yeah, like that, that's I, I don't understand people that just f- like throw away points for a little bit of more, a little bit more, right. more juice. I'd rather just take the points and pay the one ten. I guess I yeah. don't know. And then we do money line parlays to make up the difference. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. So that always works out. Yeah. Well. Every every week and with that fail. All right. Back to the ACC for your 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 fourth wager of the show. Uh, Duke at North Carolina. Carolina favored by 14. The total is 50 and a half. Duke is 6 and 3 for all. They're 3 and 2 in conference. They've struggled with quarterback Riley Leonard in and out of the lineup after a week five injury. Uh, Duke is 4 and 5 against the spread. Uh, their rival, North Carolina, is 7 and 2. They're 3 and 2 in conference. They're 6 and 3 in spread. We know they've struggled a little bit as of recent. Yeah, they dropped a couple of ACC games in incredible fashion after looking like a real threat to, to win that league and make the playoff. But you you mentioned the, the Duke quarterback issues. I think that's the biggest storyline of the game. No Riley Leonard really limits uh, what what Duke can do on offense. And maybe we, everyone was a little too high on Duke at the start of the year after they beat a Clemson team that we knew really found out really wasn't as good as yeah. that preseason ranking was. I think it's just going to be hard for Duke to keep up here uh, with, with the backup quarterback in a game in Chapel Hill uh, against Drake Bay in a final game at North Carolina. Tar Heel still with a chance to get to the ACC championship yeah. game. I, I think this is one of those situations where you have an opportunity to kind of kick your rival a little bit while they're down and put up a big number and feel good about yourself. Uh, I think Mac Brown's team gets a, gets a big win on, on Saturday. And, and, and look, Mike Elko's game, that defense has played really well yeah, ask you about at that. Duke, but a bit, I, I just think this is going to be one of those games where ultimately the defense can't keep getting stops and getting the UNC offense off the field. So I laid 14. Yeah, I was asking you if Duke's defense can muddy this game up enough. But So is this an underplay, too, under 15 and a half? Is this like a 28-14 game? No, game? no, no. I, I, be, I, I think there's a good chance UNC gets into the upper 30s. Or oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, even with Duke's defense. Wow. Yeah, Duke's yeah, defense is doing well. Um, let's get to the Big 12 now. Uh, it's weird saying that with uh, a couple of these new teams here, but Cincinnati uh, at Houston. Houston's favored by two and a half. The total is 54 and a half here. Cincinnati is just two and seven. They have zero wins in conference play. They're 36 against the spread. Houston's five and four. They've won two conference games uh, on their schedule. Houston is five and four against the spread. They just beat Baylor 25 24, while the Bearcats lost a close one at UCF. What are you thinking here, Bear? I've seen the Bearcats in person this year. I was on the sideline for the. Uh... The Oklahoma game yeah. at the start of the year. So, and at the time, I knew I wasn't looking at one of the uh, the upper half teams in the Big Twelve. I, I did not think they would still be looking for their first Big Twelve win of the, of the season. Here, I did think they'd get one of those bad Big Twelve teams by now. But at least they have they've been in some games. Um, they've outgained some teams. It's not like Houston is blowing people out in the league. I mean, they're, they're two, their two wins in the, in the league have been by one and two points. So uh, it, it's a good opportunity for the two newbies to pick up another conference win. I, I took the points here with, yeah. with, with UC. The, the Fed offense is not fun to watch at all. Uh, I could get behind and under potentially here, which I know against the Dana Holgerson team sometimes you worry about, but it's not like Houston's yeah. offense is anything great. 
whatsoever. So yeah, I, I took I took UC plus the two and a half here uh, in, in two of the uh, two of the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? New Big Twelve worse, bad, poorer, bottom it, bottom feeding Big Twelve teams. It's no surprise, and we did discuss this, I think, a couple weeks ago on the podcast, that, you know, these teams that move up from group of five to power five, they no struggle. Depth. They struggle early. They don't and, have and, a roster that's big. And I think big. they think they're going to come in and, and kick butt. It's hard to do. And, and I, I think if you want to get macro here, I don't want to say I'm happy to see this or it's, it's justifying thing. my thoughts, uh, confirmation bias, is, but – it's clearly the Cincinnati team that a couple of years ago that made the playoff was good. There were a lot of guys drafted off of that team into the NFL. But when you have teams like UCF and Cincinnati and like, oh, we see, it's not, we, it doesn't matter. We're winning all these games. We could be in the – doesn't matter. A Cincinnati team needed a comeback in Indiana. And an Indiana team, I think, won one Big, t- one Big Ten game that year. Like, like, yes, in one game that you can beat, like – Indiana, but yeah. you put together it's the, Indiana, the and Michigan, oh, the, the 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 level. That's a lot different than playing absolutely whomever in the yeah. AAC that you were. So I, I think it goes to show that the people who all along have been kind of saying there's a lot of difference between these group of five teams and these and these power five teams. Even now, when you're moving these teams into a Utah, Utah was the exception. TCU, was no, the exception. but Utah, Utah though struggled though but originally, did, and so did TCU. Yeah, they, too. Utah struggled for three or four years when they first got in the Pac-12. Obviously, they built that program back up, but it takes time. So Cincinnati, Houston, it just takes time to do that. And, and, and next year, it'll change a little bit too when o, when OU and Texas leave the Big yeah, Twelve. When you, you get your, Utah, and Arizona are coming though. They're, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, yeah, so. yeah, and the, and the Colorado obviously, who's who's obviously the best team in the country. Um, <laughs> all right, last game here that you have for now, a game I will actually be at. Uh, Memphis home. is uh, as at Charlotte. Charlotte's getting ten points, total fifty one and a half. Memphis is seven and two. They're four and one in the AAC. They've only covered two of their nine games. Uh, they score a ton, and we know they play defense uh, optional sometimes. Charlotte is three and six. They're two and three in conference. They won two of the last three games. Uh, Charlotte is five and four against the spread. Where are, you, where are you going here? Memphis is one of those teams that I like playing against because I think people see their offense and they maybe think to Score a, ton a of couple points. years ago when they made made the, beast, the, the college football playoff and and, and well not the, playoff, the the New Year's six. Yeah, they, they were ten and two that year. They think in Norvell on that offense and and but this defense is really really bad and. You're allowing 28 points a game. Last couple of weeks, you've allowed 50 and 42. And, and like, I don't know Charlotte's capable of putting 50 or 42 on the board, but they are coming off their best performance of the year, 33 points, six yards of play. Granted, it was against Tulsa, who is not very good. But they were down 17 nothing that game and, and fought back, which yeah. I know weirdly too much about Charlotte football, by the way. Well, well, well what, what, what do you think about play here, Grubbin? So, um, one, one thing I'm pulling up right here that's worth noting. You're allowed um, to tell me it's bad. Is, no, no. Is Charlotte's defense is actually really good. I don't people realize that they're 26 in the country in passing yards allowed per game. Like they have a legit defense. Their offense is getting better. Now I will, I will before you go down yeah. to the next thing, is that 20, is that ranking an indicator of them playing bad offenses or are they like legitimately? Have I, I think, I think, I think so their, their defensive coordinator came from the Ravens last year, Ryan Osborne. Like he's a legit, like he have a legitimate defense for, for, for the AAC, right. not, not like, you know, they're not going to compete nationally. Um, and their offense is getting better each week. Cause they're sort of figuring out quarterback, like their quarterback this year has been up and down. Um, I like this play. Uh, maybe I'll wager on it at the game. I try not to wager on games. I, I told you I'll be at, but um, I'll take the kids here to two o'clock kickoff. And it's just easy. Charlotte has an easy stadium to get in at. Yes. So I'm going to take the kids to the game. Beautiful. So uh, let's recap where we're, we're at. Home. Uh, let's recap where we're at here. Uh, Bear has a six wager so far. He has UTSA minus 14 and a half. Old Dominion plus 13 and a half. Wake Forest plus two and a half. The Tar Heels of North Carolina minus 14. The Bearcats plus two and a half. And then ending with the fighting Biff Pogies, uh, the Charlotte uh, uh, 49ers at plus two. 10 here. If they win, if they win this game outright, we we come in next week in a Biff Pogey uh, shirt. The, the cut bring, off. Bring or, me one. Uh, I'll, I'll ask him for bring one. Bring me one. <laughs> you, you, if they, you bring me one, I will wear it. I will ask. I will ask them for a shirt for you. Just, just, just to, just to promote them on, on the podcast. Um, we're going to promote the game of Goo Chat though, because that is next. It's Bear. It's Will Hill. It's Sammy P. And it's me, Jeff Schwartz. The most fun we have each week is going through this uh, this this game. We could travel with all the things college football. Here it is for you guys to listen to. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Gambling group chat is back. Myself, Jeff, Will Hill, Sammy P, and 
the thing that everyone obviously cares about this time of year, first and foremost, college football playoff rankings. Ohio State, number one again in the college football playoff rankings. So I'm just going to ask the question, Sammy. Is Ohio State really the best team in the country? You don't have them power rated number one, do you? Nope. Michigan one, Oregon two, Ohio State three. And then if Bowers is in, I'd put Georgia three, Ohio State four. It's funny. I, I knew we were going to talk about this. I didn't even look at the rankings like the CFP show. Like, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me because it will all figure itself out. But no, I've I've risen Oregon the most in the last month. That win against or that three point loss against Washington looks more impressive by the minutes. Oregon, Ohio State, Georgia. But I would move Georgia up just a hair uh, with Bowers on the field. Yeah, and, and there's a rumor that he could potentially play on Saturday as well. We, we, I, guess, I guess that's my point. Like, we could. I'll ask Jeff. I'll ask Will the same thing. Do you really think is Ohio? You think Ohio State's the best team in the country? Because I sure as heck don't. No, not with that offense, not with that quarterback. And I think this has kind of been the theme. Really, we spotted this early on in the year where there, there is no like great team. It's sort of like the NFL where, oh, the 49ers are the best team. Then they lose a few games in a row. I guess it's this team. I guess it's that team. We sort of go back and forth with it. One week, it looks like Georgia. The next week, it doesn't. So so it makes it fun. It's wide open. There is no like pound, pound you know, pound your fist on the table and say, this is absolutely the best team. This isn't the Georgia of, of last couple of years. It's not Bama of years past. There's just, there's no dominant team. So Got a few weeks left. It should be a, a fun finish. It's really, it's it's kind of wide open here. It makes it fun. The debates are obviously very fun. We understand that, right? It's part of why the the, the ratings are, or the rankings are released each week, right? So we can debate this. But in the end, guys, all these teams play each other, right? Michigan plays Ohio State. Alabama's on track to play Georgia. Oregon's on track to play Washington again. It'll all sort itself out. Obviously, Texas doesn't have someone in that in that top six to play, but it'll all sort itself out. So you can be really angry about Oregon being six versus Alabama being seven, Texas set, you know, eight, or be angry that Georgia's not here and Ohio State's not here, but it's all going to sell itself out. It's all going to play out. We're all going to get these games in, in, in the next three or four weeks, and we can see what happens on the field. And, and to me, the questions become then, obviously, if there's a bunch of teams that are 12 and one, we get to that point in, in, in a couple of weeks. But right now, everyone plays each other everyone's sort of where they're supposed to be we can debate again if Oregon should be the 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 the, the one loss team that's the first one if they're if they're eighth and Alabama six guess what if Alabama beats Georgia guys they're in the playoff right do we agree on that if Alabama is a 12 and one SC champion they're in the playoff I'm glad you said that because you mentioned the 12 and one teams there is no world that exists in which Alabama and Texas are both 12 and one conference champions and Alabama goes above Texas. So th that world does not exist. Texas beat them by double digits in Tuscaloosa. It wasn't close. Yes, it was early in the year, but they played. It's the ultimate tiebreak right there. 12 and one champ, 12 and one champ. So like, there's no way Alabama can go to the playoff and Texas doesn't. Like, like that would be the, the, the biggest crime of, of, of like the college football playoff era. But like, now that gets into, we, we can play out a bunch of hypotheticals with the scenarios. What's the worst one? What, I think, what, what's the one that causes the most headache? Because you're good at coming up with these. What's the one like the committee's well, worst nightmare well, where it's like this I'll, happens, well, this happens, I'll tell that you. happens? I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what it is. Okay, what one do you have? Because I have it, two. It's Florida State winning out. Mm -hmm. It's the Big Ten champ undefeated, mm -hmm. and it's Oregon, Texas, Alabama all went out. And that's and, and George would be twelve and one. Twelve, as well, 12 and one. They'd probably they'd be the first. that Oregon would be out. So you'd have mm -hmm. Oregon as a number two power rated team, possibly number one at that point. Oregon would be out. It's that simple. Oregon's see, not in see, in that situation. I think the other one is, and I'd love to get your your opinion, uh, Sammy and, and Will as well. You got undefeated at Florida State, undefeated Michigan, undefeated Georgia, Texas, and Oregon are twelve and one. What happens now? Because Oregon's out. I'm just telling you, Oregon's not going to be in. We know this already. You, you smile. You guys know we've watched the cultural play. This is the first week, guys, in cultural life history where a Pac-12 school got a tiny bit of a bump over an SEC program or Texas, and people lost their minds over it. Like this is, we know how this is going to happen. Oregon's going to be left out. It is what it is. I'm not upset about it. Just that's the truth of it. I've been a Pac-12 fan my entire life. I know how this goes. Oregon would be left out. Do you, do you think so, Sammy? Because it was like. All year long, the Pac-12 has gotten immense amount of respect, and you've, you've had all these teams ranked highly all year, and I think people view the Pac-12 as a better league than the Big 12. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's a slam dunk. That, that one would worry me if I were Texas. I don't, what, what do you think, Sammy? Am I, am I right or wrong? Which scenario are we talking about again? They all run together. Or, or, you just gave they me basically, like different things. Yeah, I gave you, yeah, I'm sorry. We, we, threw, we threw a lot out at you. Uh, Florida State, Michigan, Georgia undefeated. Texas, Oregon, 12-1 conference champs. 
I, I don't know, man. I mean, I could tell you who's going to be That's... favored. I I don't know, nor do I. Like I said off the top, I don't care. I don't care. Just give me the four teams. We'll make the numbers from there. Oh, I care. I mean, <laughs> well, just for context, here, like, let's say Florida State gets in and plays Oregon, right? Like, you guys can decide who goes one, two, three, four. I can tell you right now, Oregon is probably a five, five and a half, six point favorite yeah. on Florida State I on a neutral. So that just and that's the power rating, Oregon. Yeah, six and a half. I would say five and a half, six, six and a half, somewhere under seven, but close to seven. And and that's what gets me, Will, because we hear about oh, odds shouldn't be determining who is in the playoff and ranking and who is not. But aren't the odds and the spread, the lines on the games, an indicator of power ratings? Which power ratings are an indicator of who are the best teams in the country? Should shouldn't that? come into some type of play or, or thought pro I know the committee would never do it, but it isn't like that a truer indicator of best four as opposed to this most deserving best four kind of conglomeration mishmash of what the committee's given us. Well, first off, I'm not one to overreact, but I think our Miami to make the playoffs bet might be in a little bit of trouble. That would make more I don't think that one's getting in. Um, no, no. I, guess I, I think we're done. That, the counter to that would be, all right, why play the games? Just go based on power ratings, and who cares if you lose two games, three games? Like, the endings of these games have to matter. Whether you make the kick in overtime or miss the kick, it doesn't affect your, your power rating in overtime if you lose by three or win by three. But winning or losing should matter. Otherwise, why are we watching? I guess that would be my counter. Yeah. Well, yeah, but in the end, the, the win, if we're talking about, you know, to settle a tie, basically, right, of teams that are 12 and 1, that have all won their yeah. game. So oh, well, people oh, do sure. not understand. People, yeah, pe look, people that are listening now, I think, to our show understand how power rankings work, and Sammy's explained them basically each week, but I don't think people realize, like, how lines are made. I, I, I think they just sort of think that people sit in a room like like we, us four do, just draw up the line and put it on a board. And so if people understood how they were made, I think people would be more welcome to the idea of a of a neutral power ranking system being the one that you know determines playoff. Now, obviously, with a 12-team playoff next year, most of the discussion is moot. We're arguing about three lost teams, which is silly to me about, about a playoff structure. But nonetheless, um, I think that would solve a lot of the issues if people knew what power rankings were and how lines were determined. So that being said, well, Michigan State State College undefeated after uh, Saturday. Can, can, can I interest anybody in Michigan laying four and a half at Penn State, or are we, uh, we thinking dog here, Sammy? I would probably lay it before I'd play uh, the dog. This just whole like hornet's nest thing where you you want to just fly in there and just rattle Michigan's thing for the last two or three weeks, if not longer. It, it just feels sort of personal at this point in time. And now we still don't know like which teams are throwing daggers at other teams. It's been reported that Ohio State and Ryan Day had something to do with this. And he has denied it, but then another report said he did do it. I just feel like if Harbaugh has the chance, he's going to run this thing up. And my concern stylistically in the game, not power rating, is that Penn State can't like move the ball down the field. I think there's concerns about Aller, as my cat tends to agree. I think the cat likes Michigan too. I'm going to silence that toy here in a second. But it, it feels like it's a game where Penn State could really struggle to throw the ball down the field. And I was talking to a scout who says Michigan might have six NFL players on defense this year and next year go in the draft that is insanity to me how good they are on d penn state's pretty good on d too this i mean this just screams under to me It'd be interesting if penn state realized early on it reminds me of the ohio state game which was just very methodical um and, and low scoring you know at what point do you realize hey we can't run the ball so we're going to try <laughs> to take some chances down the field uh, to me it's an under 45 to me this is like a i don't know 20 to 13 21 14 type of game uh under 45 is a play for me my thought on this game is maybe there's a play on Penn State first half because this is Michigan's first time this season basically playing anyone that has a pulse and they're on the road. Penn State's a good football team. Now, everything you guys have said about their offense is absolutely true, but this feels like a, a, a situation that it's tied at 10 at halftime. And just like last season, the second half belongs to the better football team in Michigan. Like that, that's sort of how I see this game going out where Michigan struggles a little bit early. Hostile environment, on the road, playing a good football team for the first time the entire season, and then eventually their talent, once they sort of get accustomed to the gameplay, end up taking over in the end. And so I think Michigan, I, I would almost play maybe Penn State first half, Michigan full game. I think that's sort of how this game goes. Yeah, I think my first line when I handicap this game is, the question I ask is, how many points can Penn State realistically score? I think that kind of goes in line with both what Will and Sammy were saying. Like, I, I'm like, I just look right now, I just, 
I, I just fired under 20 and a half, and I, I paid minus 130. Mm-hmm. At DraftKings, 19 and a half is 105. But, like, I, I think, like, 20 points is, like, max. Repel. Like, if they get 20, I would. Was it, is it 10 against Ohio State? So they scored? Was, was that what it was? It, it was whatever it was. Yeah. It shouldn't even have been that. The, the thing about their offense, and, and again, this is things we've talked about before, is like when you play good defense like Michigan or any good defense, you have to be able to generate explosive plays, right? Like you cannot go down the field against Michigan and just go like three yards, six yards, two yards, eight yards. 20 to 12, like sorry. You, 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 yeah, you're right. You, you can't just like, you have to have these chunk offensive plays, and they don't do that, guys. They they, they don't produce those plays. And so to me, I don't think they score enough. But I think it's, it's valid to say Michigan – might come out a little slow because they haven't played a team like this all season. Bigger chance of an upset. We, we, we talked about potentially Alabama, Georgia steamrolling to the SEC title game. I don't think we've had a, a matchup of two teams undefeated in conference play since that 2009 Alabama Florida game. I think that's correct off the top of my head. So you got Alabama's undefeated in the SEC, you've got Georgia who's undefeated in the SEC. Is Alabama maybe in a tricky spot this week off that big emotional game against LSU, knocked Daniels out and just kind of pulled away in the second half? And now you got Georgia who they're going to face an Ole Miss team that is the best team that they face this year. They were kind of in a game last week against Missouri. Either of these two teams uh, on upset alert? And uh, if so, who who do you think it might be, Will? I like Kentucky plus the 10 and a half. I bet him plus 10 and a half for all the reasons you mentioned. Let down spot. Um, sounds like Leary's good to go for Kentucky. He didn't play well for most of the year, but remember, he's coming off a chest injury or a pec injury or whatever it was and started to look a little better the last few weeks. If he's good to go, I, I, again, this is a little bit of a sleepy spot, a letdown spot. Kentucky might be a little better than people think. I could see this being a tight game. I still don't think, and we talked about this all year and they've gotten better. I still don't think this is like a vintage Bama team, a vintage defense. They don't have the explosive guys at receiver. They're not as great at offensive line quarterback i mean just go up and down the roster it's a good team it's just not a great bama team um i I think we're looking at a close game here and and bama's starting to get that little sleeper where everyone's like oh oh, i like them at nine to one to win it all i like them at six to one they're they're starting to get a little bit of a a buzz uh, in in terms of that so i could definitely see this being a tight game here sam any thoughts on either of the sec games yeah i think his point about leary is legit like i wish he was healthy clearly he's not he's gonna probably try and give it a go but he couldn't see the play sheet last week i mean that's that's not ideal problem. um i made georgia mississippi eight and a half there so anything okay. over 10 feels fair there yeah well i mean you're gonna you're gonna make georgia more expensive because people are gonna bet georgia but my true number there is sub 10 so i would probably i'd probably take old miss before i take kentucky but I'm not thinking money line. Like I'd much rather have the the number, right? Have much rather have that point spread than have Mississippi money line. I think both those schools probably have a hangover early on, but end up winning this game in the end. The the thing about Ole Miss guys, like when does Kiffin win this game? Like, has he won this game in his career? Right. As, as, like, he, he doesn't close, win this game. Yeah. They've been close. They get close a lot. Uh, but Georgia's season, like they win, Georgia ends up winning these games. As far as Alabama, I think you guys are exactly right about the sleepiest situation. They're all there. It's a 12 noon kickoff in Kentucky after a big win. They're going to start slow. We, we see this all time in college football, right? They're going to start slow, but the talent of their team will sort of overtake Kentucky in the end. I would take the points with both these. I don't feel strongly about them, but if you're asking my opinion, I think the points is, is the way to go in both these games. What about the points out in Austin this week, Jeff? Been we gonna? It, it was funny. I had I actually had a uh, someone text me uh, this week. When was the last time Oregon or USC rather was this big of an underdog? And uh, Did you look it up. Oh, I knew what it was off the top. Of my head. When was it? 2011. Yeah, because it was someone. Who, it was someone who was associated. They beat us that year, right? Yeah, yeah they beat us. Yeah, yeah. I got, it, was, um, it was someone who was associated with the, with the team back then. Yeah, and I said yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you the answer to that. So here's the deal, guys. Um, this is going to be a bloodbath. I'll just put it simply. Like, Oregon's going to win this game by a lot of points. Uh, it's going to be more than, somewhere... More than 15? Yes. It's going to be somewhere in, like, the 55 to 28 range, is my guess. Um, USC changed the change defense coordinator. I was reading some quotes from the new defense coordinator. Quote, we might just have one call all game. Oh, oh, okay. Good Good luck. <laughs> like, I, I don't mean, like, I don't know. And I'll tell you what. When Caleb Williams and this USC offense has played like defenses, right? Notre Dame and Utah... 20 points against Notre Dame in a, in a pretty sloppy game. Only 25 against Utah. Remember, they had the pick six in that game that got him back into that game. 
Oregon's defense is just as good and probably better than Utah's and just as good as Notre Dame's. Like, I just think this can be a struggle for USC here. Oregon feels like they're sort of on a mission since that Washington game. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll hope my, my goal is to be sleeping on the East Coast bear as Ty Thompson scores a 63rd point for Oregon in a, in a 30 point victory for the Ducks. That's my dream of this weekend. Well, but I, ho I hope your dream becomes reality. Thank you. Uh, I want to see you be in a yeah. be in a good mood and be well rested for the NFL on Sunday. I, I will not. I will. I will not get to see all your trolling texts though. Thankfully, because I'll be hopefully that's, be sleeping. That's, that's a yeah. problem. Will you laying the points and you laying the points here at Austin? You're allowed to say USC is no. going to move the ball. USC is going to move the ball on anybody. It's just I don't know if Oregon's going to punt this entire game. So. What's a team total for Oregon? That might be the better way to play it, just because I think Oregon might score every time they every single time they touch the ball, it's, basically. It's, it's 44 and a half or 45, somewhere around there. At least it was. Yeah. I wonder if USC just might be better on defense. I'm looking for the team total, by the way, to confirm Jeff's thoughts. Uh over yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah over 44 and a half is 130, <laughs> over 45 and a half is 105. I wonder if USC at some point just me might be better off on defense doing either two things. Number one, onside kick after yes. every score, or B, try and sneak a 12th man out there on the field on defense and just <laughs> see if the officials just kind, kind of kind of see it out there because like it, it clearly doesn't work. I mean, I mean it, it's embarrassing how bad they are. No, I mean we're joking, but that's really that's that that's the best strategy to onside kick every time you get one out of every I don't know three of them. That's that's I mean, do you have a better chance of getting that or getting a stop? I, I don't think that's crazy at all, honestly. You could really talk yourself out of a winner here. I think we're all on the same page that Oregon is going to boat this team. But if you really wanted to get like super cute, you could start talking yourself into the over because USC can't stop anybody, or maybe you like the under because USC is not going to score on Oregon, like. I feel like without overthinking it too much, you just lay the points here. This feels like a dead dog walking. And and my big concern with USC, do they even care anymore? I mean, you got three losses. The quarterback's going to the NFL. Who knows where Lincoln Riley's going to end up in the next couple of years? I just, I feel like everything has gone wrong for them this year. Everything went right last year. Everything is going wrong this year. And if they get down, you know, 21 to seven, do they have the care? Do they actually give a damn to not get blown off the field. And I don't know that answer right now. I, I think you, you said something that I think maybe people at the start of the year kind of forgot about was last year, how friggin' lucky they were all year long with the turnover plus, luck plus 21 turnover margin. And, and, and that's how they were winning games. And it, it, I don't want to say masked how bad their defense was because everybody knew how bad their but because they at least got some turnovers, it was like, okay, maybe we're not going to allow 50 today. We're only allow, we're only going to allow 38. But I think one of those those things obviously regressing and coming back to the norm this year definitely uh definitely hurt them. And I don't even I don't need to say I don't you know, I don't think you need to say years with Lincoln Riley as well, Sammy. It might it might be a matter of weeks. Ooh. Ooh, weeks or breaking weeks news or here. Yeah, Lincoln Riley's going to be. No, you, you, you hear things every now and then that that he might be moving on to the NFL next year. So we'll see what happens. All right, I think your Penix bet is coming down to one game. I, I think the winner of the Pac-12 championship game between Oregon and Washington, I think either Bo Nix or Michael Penix will wind up winning the Heisman Trophy, Sammy. So I, th I think you're probably going to be in a position where maybe you – play a little Bo Nix back in 20. We talked about that last week and so someone said like, who's the one guy you wish you had? And it was Bo Nix. Cause I had, I had JJ 25 to one. I had Daniels at 35 to one. Now the Daniels tickets, unfortunately dead, but I think it's either going to be Bo or Penix, the winner of that Pac-12 championship game. I'm rolling the dice, buddy. I'm done hedging that thing. You know, I have a little McCarthy and, and you know, they're going to run into some offensive issues, not only against Penn state, but against Ohio state too. I mean, they've been playing like, Mississippi State, East, West, North for two months. You know, they're going to have some offensive adversity for McCarthy. I don't think he's going to put up big numbers uh, in either of those games. So at this point, it is what it is. I'm going to sweat it out until the very end, and I hope Penix gets it done. What would you make Texas USC if you knew uh, Quinn Ewers was going to play? What What do you, yeah, how, how, how much do you think that line would go up, Sam? Because I see what, 10 and a half right now, Texas, USC, like, like if news broke that, that, um, I see, I see 10 in a lot of places, 10 and a half at circa 
and 10 pretty much everywhere else. Like, like if, if what do you think Ewers is worth to that line? Yeah, you're talking this weekend against TCU, right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a halfway number. I mean, we saw the reports. I think it was Bruce Feldman came out and said that he's trending in the right direction. So I think this number was sort of a halfway maybe like 11 and a half, 12. And then I think the bigger drop is if he's out, you know, I think there's this expectation in Vegas that he might be able to give it a go. So it's not going to blow to 14. It's just not. Um, I would think though, if he doesn't play, we're talking about maybe an eight, eight's possible. I think there's a bigger change if he's out than if he's in. Is Texas getting through this TCU Iowa straight stretch, both road games without a loss? Are they making it through? You think, does it matter at quarterback who plays to, to get through this stretch? Or are they going to just drop one because that's sort of how college football works? I think it. I think it might matter in terms of Texas is kind to this year's this year's TCU. Yeah, with the, the the close games that they had, you lose a quarterback and just kind of coming from a little bit off off of a down year. But but I think from the some of the decision making that uh, Malik Murphy has made and some of the turnovers that have happened with him under center, like. That would have to worry you, I think, going on the road. Maybe not this week because I, I think TCU's defense is really bad. But I, but I think maybe next week in Ames, that could be the one potentially to uh, to trip Texas up um, if indeed they are going to lose. I, I think the bigger question is going to be like who ultimately are these, is going to wind up being their opponent in the uh, the Big 12 championship game. Like o Oklahoma State, like we talked before, I, I think they are ripe for an upset this week. Uh, a UCF team that finally won a one only game last year should have beaten Oklahoma and Norman. Like 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 Will, isn't it UCF plus the two and a half here or a pass against Oklahoma State? Yep, I'm with you. UCF, look, they're they're minus five in turnovers, I think, on the season. Oklahoma State is plus is plus five. So sometimes that sort of normalizes and there's some regression coming there. Um, I, I still can't get the South Alabama game out of my head early in the season. Like that team is in there somewhere. I know they've played better since, but, um, but yeah, I like UCF. I'm glad I'm not going against you because I, my picks have been pretty good on here, but every time I, I go against you, um, it, it doesn't work out for me. I need to just stop fading you. I need to respect my elders and just stay away from your picks. <laughs> I was going to say that with that, that 55, three, I think might've taught you a little lesson there last week. Yeah, it, it, it did. It, I, you know, I think you guys could sense that my handicap, I didn't have a lot of conviction. I was you know what, Arizona, Arizona State, they've both been good to me. I'm just going to keep riding them. I, uh, I I got off a little, I, I stayed on a little too long. Although Jeff, g give him credit in the, our group chat in, in real life, our text thread. He's like, hey, Arizona State's quarterbacks hurt. Let's bet team total under. And uh, that was a pretty easy one. I guess we got some some help from the officiating, according to Jeff. But that was one that uh, that got home. So it helps me paying attention. Yeah, that, that thing about live wagering, right? If you're like watching Pac-12 Network, you're the only person, you know, west of the Rockies, like east of the Rockies, <laughs> watching Pac-12 Network. Uh, it helps out to see when injuries. I'm I'm against you this weekend, Will, though, because I I think Colorado covers against Arizona. I know you're in Arizona this week, but this is a, a dead spot for Arizona. Two straight home games against ranked opponents. You we win both of those. You're on the road to Colorado, who's not very good at the 12 mount kickoff on Pac-12 Network, and then you host Utah the following weekend. This is a, a dead spot for Arizona. I don't love Colorado, but they keep breaking my. You know, they 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 covered last week again. They covered UCLA. I, I think Colorado covers the 10 and a half this weekend. Yeah, I've had a decent feel for Colorado. And it's why we made that under five and a half bet uh, last week in terms of wins, which look, <laughs> we, we still got a couple more to go here. So I, I got a little tight. I, I took them plus the points. That was not easy. They, they backed towards you a couple times um, the past couple weeks, but I just think Arizona is still underrated. This is a legitimately good team. You know, we talked last week, maybe they're, you know, if it, I'll say this, if you ask an Arizona fan, uh, you know, that they're, you give them true serum. They will tell you they're the second best team in the PAC 12, whether they are or not. I'm not sure, but this is a really good team. <laughs> uh, I think Colorado just has so many flaws, offensive line defense. I, I don't think this game is competitive. So I laid it with Arizona, Arizona, really, really well coached team there with, yes. with, uh, with Jed Fisher, very well coached that he has around. Yes. Him. He's not going to be, I don't think he's going to be there long too. I mean, I, I don't know what jobs are coming open, but to me, he's one of these guys, him, uh, you know, the, the, the Kansas coach, there's a couple of these guys that, that are just not going to be able to Elko at Duke. A couple of these guys are going to be destined for bigger jobs. Duke was a team I'm looking to, uh, to fade this week against UNC. I, I, I without Riley Leonard, they got major quarterback issues. And I think the, the kind of the spot for UNC this week with May's final home game, kind of losing a couple of games in, in ugly fashion like like they did. Uh, this could be a get-right game against a, a rival um, in Duke that may not have been as good as a lot of people thought they were 
earlier in the uh, Sammy, what's sticking out to you? What 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 do you really got? We uh, we we came up a little short last week with Brown, but we, which is fine. We're we're still well up on the uh, on the Ivy League, but any, anything on the board? What strikes your fancy? Yeah, we can save the rotation number, I think, for the very end. I love this Friday night game in Dallas. SMU laying 17 in North Texas. I don't think Stone's going to play for SMU, Bear, but they really like this backup. And I had somebody tell me in Vegas that SMU has six guys who could score touchdowns on any play. North Texas has two. And I thought that was a funny way to look at it. I don't know that that's, you know, true or false. But, you know, even with the backup who they allegedly really like at SMU, they're going to get 45 in this game. That's a big number, 17. I know people don't want to lay 17 on a Friday night maybe, but North Texas is awful. And I don't think I had them downgraded enough. So I'm going to lay 17 here. It's probably going to close a little bit higher. We're starting to see it get a little pricey on the uh, on the favorite, like minus 15 in a couple places. So I, I think 120 SMU is a very good bet. 45, 20, 45, 17, something like that. North Texas is... Not very good there. Who doesn't want to lay 17 on a Friday night? <laughs> I want to meet these people. I'll happily lay 17 on a Friday night. Have it on as I'm dozing off in my hotel room in State College. Easily. Will, what, what, uh, what, what, what else you got out there besides uh, Colorado? Thought we covered everything. Uh, maybe uh, Texas Tech, I think, getting four. I think they're getting healthier. I think Morton's getting healthier. I think they'll be able to run the ball against Kansas. To me, three, plus three and a half, plus four. I think there's some plus fours out there. I, I, I do like Texas Tech plus the four, too. One game we haven't mentioned, Utah Washington. We we hit on USC Oregon, but can Washington obviously gonna be facing a much better defense this week than they did last week? Can Utah go to Seattle and kind of play the USC game plan against that Washington offense and kind of ugly that game up? It's nine and a half. That we would you take the use in this game plus nine and a half, Jeff? I never thought I'd say this about a Utah team this year, but I actually like the over in this game. Uh, it might be the first over I've mostly played most of the year. Like, I just think that you look at, at Washington's defense, it's not very good, the, and, and there's not a lot of depth there. And again, they've been buoyed by fourth down defensive success and a couple turnover luck, especially against USC. I mean, that, you know, that fumble by Caleb Williams, he's kind of hold the ball out there like a loaf of bread, really turned that game, right? Um, and so I think their defense was 100 and something in havoc rate. They're 96 on third down. I think Utah can move the ball enough by running the football and doing basically the, the USC game plan. On the flip side, I just don't think Utah's defense is equipped to stop Washington very much. You know, Washington struggles on offense when you get pressure up the middle. Utah's best edge rushers are in outside and against Washington's tackles, who are very good. Like, I just think Washington's going to score somewhere in the high 30s and 40s, sort of like how Oregon did. And I think Utah will get somewhere in the 20s in this game. So I have the over, which is uh, Utah's you know, hasn't gone over very much this season, but I think their offense is playing a tad better lately against a bad Washington defense. I, I like the over in this one. Sammy, how low does it need to go for you to consider going over? Iowa, 28. Seeing 28s pop there on the total. <laughs> How low does that need to go to even have you consider going over in that game against the State University of New Jersey? Uh, I don't know. 27. <laughs> I just call it. Can, I, can we rewind a second? As Jeff was saying, he loved the over in Utah, Washington. It got steamed under. I'm not even kidding. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, in this total, I'm, I'm not even making this up. As he's talking about how much he loves the over, it's like, Bing, 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 under. Um, yeah, it, it, it was like 53 me, yesterday, right? Was it? Yeah. It, it opened 49 54 now? and a half in Vegas. And now yeah. it's, you know, it's tumbling. It's like 50 at some shops, 49 and a half offshore. Is it, you couldn't have wow. timed that any better, buddy. That was amazing. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. I'm still taking the over now. I, I get a better number now. Let's go over again. Let's hit it again. Just wait it out. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's well, funny. maybe not wait it out. But if you got 50, go over 50, please. Yeah, I'm seeing delay. I see 50 and a half at Caesars is what I see, and then 50 and a half offshore as well. That's a low number. But I so Sam Sammy's got a better Sammy's got a better odds feed than uh better than I do. The big the big player over there, the big 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 odds oh, for Don Best or whatever it was spank you spank odds, whatever he's got. <laughs> we're, we're we're working out there. Well, you want you want to go over twenty eight? Was my answer. I'd go over twenty seven, Bear. If you give me a twenty seven on Rutgers Iowa, I, I could dabble. You can I push it 17-10. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think the betting aspect when you, you get these really low totals of it, I like to play the first quarter under. Sometimes they hang a seven, sometimes a seven and a half juice when these like Army Air Force, Army Navy games because I, I just I want to avoid the overtime. I want to avoid, hey, we can't run the ball and then we have to, you know, one of these teams gets down 10 points that has to throw the ball. Well, they can't throw the ball. That's when bad things happen. You get pick sixes. So sometimes the first quarter they come out conservative. You just see like a, you know, a three nothing first quarter. So uh, if you see a seven, a seven and a half, I don't know if quarter lines are up, but I think sometimes these are the best way to play these, uh, th these really low totals first quarter under. I guess just for the sake of just getting another game in there, Miami, Florida State, any chance Miami can can keep this close? I mean, their offense has been so, so bad in in, re, in recent weeks, and now you're going against Van Dyke healthy? Florida State team. I, I don't know. Like, you hear, like, people talking about, like, does he know the difference between injured and hurt, and does he just have the yips? Like, it just – but something has to be going on there. It can't just be – because they did not take a knee at the end of the Georgia Tech game that they suddenly can't find themselves on offense and, and, and things are good. Something clearly uh, is a miss there, Jeff, right? I, I think it has to be. By the way, Will, it's... It has to be what? It's six, six and a half right now for Iowa Rutgers first quarter total is what I see on DraftKings. No, nah, you got to... I, I can't do it under the... I, you know, I, I need the seven. <laughs> I, I just... I need to push if there's some fluke touchdown. So that's... I mean, if you shop around, maybe you can find a seven. I, I don't want to give out a number that doesn't exist, but I just mean like it, just in general, when you see these low totals, yeah. I look for the first quarter under. And if you see the seven, seven and a half, that's when I go under. But six and a half, I mean, that's just not a pleasant experience to sit there for a half hour and root for nothing to happen. Sure Absolutely. Is. Like no score. <laughs> sure it is. Okay. Wait, back to Miami very quickly. You, you said after I lost to Georgia Tech mm -hmm. that the history of Miami is they kind of go in the tank after a mm -hmm. loss like that. And that's exactly what happened, right? They've yeah. gone the take since then. And I thought they would sort of regroup and, and get back at it. But look, if you're hoping for maybe some clarity in the CFP rankings, you know, Florida State losing would certainly clear up a lot of things. Uh, and maybe Miami is that team to do that. We've seen Mario Cristobal teams in the past sort of pull off upsets after looking not so great at other points of the season. But I just know Miami had six points last weekend, right? Like they, they, Six points they're yeah. gonna cut against Florida State. I, I I think Florida State. I don't know what the the numbers right now for this 14 game. Fourteen and a half. Fourteen. I I don't know how Miami wins this game. It would be great. I'm I'm rooting for Florida State to lose at some point. Just as a as a fan of a Pac-12 school that wants some clarity at the top of the thing, but it, it's not happening this weekend. I I think that's the I think that's the the thing that you know the, to to kind of go full circle from where we started with the rankings. Like I think Florida State's a team that has the least margin. Like they, I think they need to be undefeated to get. I don't think they're yeah. going to win one of these one-loss debates because of the way the the SEC is down this year. And will speak for yourself on rooting for nothing to happen. I sat through 90 minutes on 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 Wednesday afternoon during an an inter Salzburg Champions League match, sitting on under two and a half, and we got a nice <laughs> one nil result. So I was rooting for nothing to happen there. I, oh, I'm I'm really happy for you. That's funny because I didn't get a text. I don't know if Jeff and Sammy got a text. So nice, nice that you I, keep the winners to yourself. No. Um, that, yeah, that's really great. I I got a text at the 71st minute. Who they said it's zero oh, zero sure. right now. My bet's going great. Yeah, I got a text oh, at that, that 71st that's minute. Very that, helpful. That, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was great. Is, is Ohio State capable with that offense of covering 31 and a half? Am I crazy to kind of like Michigan State? Is that is that too many points? Michigan I, State, Ohio State, uh, Michigan State, um, oh, Ohio State. Yeah. It feels like a lot. That's a good call. It does feel like a lot because I, I don't know. Like in years past, you you knew Ohio State could easily go out there and win 52-7. I, I don't know if this is a 52-7 a type of Ohio State team. I agree. I laugh at the total. The, the spread is 31. The total's 47. So they're saying Michigan State's <laughs> just not going to do anything, basically. Well, they, they, got, they got their win last week, and hopefully we can uh, – Give people a, a bunch of wins this week, but well, we got we got we we got to continue tradition here, Sammy. Wrap wrap it up with uh, take take us to the FCS. Anything? These are two and one. Just for the record, uh, my mentions and my DMs would indicate that these are zero and eight, but they are actually <laughs> two and one uh, on the show. Believe it or not, we're going to go to the Patriot League, Jeff's favorite conference after the Pac-12, the Patriot League. Yes. We're going to go to three zero eight nine two seven. It's Fordham and Lafayette. I think it's going to open high 50s, maybe 60. I would still go over at 60. These two offenses, Hummet, they are very good. They they get touchdowns. They don't kick field goals. I think this is going to open a little bit low, like high 50s, maybe a 60. We're going to go over. I love it. Well, you know, you know the way the bookkeeping works, guys. 
the, the wins count for like a half and the losses count for like two. Yes. So, that, so that, that, that's the way it all works out. So every time I will appreciate say, though, you guys. I, yeah. No, you're right, but our audience is actually – we have a great audience because you get a lot of good feedback, you know, Twitter, and, and people seem to love the show and appreciate the pick. So I, I think our audience has been pretty good. No, you, you're, you're right. We, we, we do appreciate the, uh, the people chiming in, and we try and get back to as many people uh, as we can. So hopefully 308-927 will be another winner for us. Hopefully a lot more winners than that. Always appreciate your time, and uh, until next week, have a great weekend, guys. Bear. At halftime of Iowa Northwestern, it was zero zero. It was awesome. Halftime of halftime of of USC Washington had sixty three points. The same sport. That, that that's what they tell no, me. It it's not the same sport. <laughs> it's not the same sport. I, I, I wanted Iowa Northwestern to end scoreless so bad. I, I was genuinely two, disappointed. Just two nothing. That would have been the lowest score. Two nothing. Right. That could have been the lowest. There's no like one point weird Correct. college football yeah, rule. Exactly. We get a single point for some reason. Um, safety. That's uh, yeah. Safety. Oh god. Two nothing would have just set the internet on fire. Uh, but we're gonna set your your picks are gonna be are gonna be on fire this week. We're, we're getting back to some winning ways. Hopefully. Let's recap where Bear is at before we get to both our best bets here. Bear has UTSA minus fourteen and a half. His Old Dominion plus thirteen and a half. Wake Forest plus two and a half. North Carolina minus fourteen. Cincinnati. Plus two and a half, and Charlotte plus ten. Bear, best bet. Where are you going? I kind of alluded to it with Will there in the yeah. in the group chat. I, I UCF get plus two and a half against Oklahoma State. You got Oklahoma State, which is won five in a row. Four of them is an underdog. Um, coming off of that Bedlam game last week, you you would think that this is a very predictable flat spot for, 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 for the Cowboys. You got word game against UCF word game against Houston and then BYU. That's what stands between Oklahoma state and getting to the big 12 title game. Like, I don't think this is an easy game for them at all. Uh, UCF nearly won in Norman. Like I said, uh, they're clearly a different game, a different team uh, with John Rice Plumley a quarterback, very dangerous game. UCF coming off that yeah. win last week against Cincinnati. Uh, I think there's something to build off with some of the games that they've had lately. Uh, Give me, give me UCF plus two and a half. Are they winning this game outright? I think there's a very good chance they win the game. Yeah, outright. yeah. So I'd, I'd take to echo on our conversation yeah. from earlier. I take UCF plus the points, yeah. and then maybe throw them in a little bit of a round robin or just with with some money lines as well. Yeah, the round robin's fun. It's a fun round. It's fun yeah. to do that. All right, my best bet. I'm mocking you Arizona this week. I've done that two straight weeks. They they, no. they, they they've hit for me. Unfortunately, it worked I, out well. I, I like Colorado though this week. So my my best bet is uh, the under in the Rose Bowls. UCLA, Arizona State under 44 and a half. Um, Arizona State lost 55 to 3 against Utah. Yes, they did. Uh, they left, the, they, they, they entered the game with six offensive linemen, they left with five. They entered the game with one quarterback ish, and they ended with their running back playing quarterback for the fourth quarter. That's, I'm told that's uh, a problem. It's a problem, and I don't think Trent, Trent Borgay is going to play. They're down with Shada. It's my man Scadabo taking snaps under center. So he was the one who was playing quarterback yes. for the fourth quarter. He actually completed a pass, yeah. he completed like a, like a 15 yard pass uh, down the sideline. Um, Arizona State is not going to score. Um, UCLA has the best defense in the country generating pressure. They're really good. They, they have a top 10 pick in law too. And then on, on their offensive side of the ball, it, it appears that the, the, the Dante Moore and Ethan Garbers are healthy, mm -hmm. but the offense is not good right the now. The problem with your under, that's the Dante the Moore yes. interception. And as Dante Moore has thrown three, coming. three pick sixes, but this is Arizona State's defense. It's, it's like, they're okay. They're not great, but the Dante Warren interceptions could ruin me. Like, that, that's, that's cost me two UCLA wagers this season. Um, but uh, I just think this game is going to be, you know, 24 7. Like, it, it might not even get in the 40s. It's so likely. It, 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 so likely. It, it, it might not even be a sweat. So uh, that's my, my my best bet out west uh, in the Pac 12. I was going to take Oregon minus the 15, but I figured I'd, I'd made my case earlier about how I feel about that game. Yeah. And you don't, and you don't want to, you, you hate betting on, betting on your team or betting on games that you're at. So that's also a game when I'm going to be hopefully sleeping by the end of it. So, cause it's a late kickoff. I'm blaming you because you told me it'd be a day game and you lied to me. I thought for sure it would be a day game. Yeah. You lied to me there. I, 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 I did not think it would be Pac 12 after dark. It's way after dark. Yeah. Really, 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 <laughs> really late after, after dark. dark. All right. That's it. Those are our wages for today. For the weekend, uh, hopefully, hopefully the, the 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 best bet there with UCF is as easy as last week's uh, best bet was with uh, Utah. Uh, with Utah, that was over that, fast. That, that worked out well. We made a lot of money that game because of the, uh, the the injury to Borgay. I bet Utah minus seventeen and a half. I bet Utah second half. I bet Arizona. Yeah, we were State going, you you were right 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 away. You were like ASU quarterback out. And yes. Like, okay. Yeah. That, that, that 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 that's a good thing. So. 
crazy this playoff stuff. I'm just trying to figure out how. Well, we should be very, be very angry at all times about playoff rankings. They really matter. We should be angry, exactly. angry about them. But, but you think you think about the wagers and the wagers that you have when you made them that they were good bets. And I, I, if your Oregon situation, well, Miami out. bet wasn't good. No, the Miami bet wasn't good. But the but but like the Oregon to make the playoff and like if they don't make it, and yeah. it's, that's going to be a hard one to swallow. Uh, so another addition of big noon kickoffs bear bets in the book. Appreciate everybody for chiming in, watching, listening, downloading, subscribing, rating, reviewing. As Will said, we do have some great listeners, and we appreciate everybody uh, who interacts with us, and we try and get back to as many people as we can on Twitter. So until next time, remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.